This is a little bit of documentation that I'm doing for attaching the bottom skin to the wing of my Xena 650. I'm mainly doing this for my own reference so that when I get ready to do the other wing, I'll have something I can look back on and sort of refresh my memory on how I did everything the first time. However, I'm going to go ahead and put this out here so if someone is doing something similar, maybe that'll give them some ideas on how they may want to proceed on, uh, on attaching their on attaching the wing skins uh, to the wing of the airplane that they may be building. So the first step will be for me to go ahead and pull the wing skin off and get a better idea of how things are set up internally. So I'll go ahead and cover uh, some of the things that are different compared to what I had before when I was doing the top skin. Uh, the first is the method of support. Now the previous, uh, when I was doing the top skin, I was supporting everything with just the 8020 by itself. And of course that was feasible to do because I obviously, uh, when I had the uh, bottoms, or when I had the uh, didn't have the top skin on, and this part was normally facing down, of course it was a lot easier for me to uh, attach things like 8020. Now with the uh, top skin in place now, of course there's not as easy of a way to do that kind of support with straight pieces of 8020. The normal way that Zenith uh, recommends it, at least from the documentation that I've got, is you would run something like a 2x4 underneath. And I could have done it that way, uh, but I wanted something a little bit more adjustable, so what I wound up using was actually three of these uh, motorcycle lifts. And what that gave me the ability to do is very easily fine-tune the level of this, because obviously you want to get the level of the level of this uh, as accurate as as accurate as possible to avoid any twisting in the wing. Now for the back side as far as the support, the front side of course is a bit heavier because you've got this heavier spar so that would be the reason for going ahead and using the, or the motorcycle jacks even though they are way un over capacity as far as what can be you know what would be needed but that was the the most practical size that was available. On the back side since it's a bit lighter what I've got are, uh, are lab jacks and those are basically tools that are used chemistry for holding up things like flasks and beakers and such but they also come in very handy for uh, for adjusting now one thing I do have to worry about it you'll notice of course that this at least from this perspective you're uh, you're pushing directly on the skin but actually of course you don't want to do that on either the front or the back so what I've got set up or I'll give a uh, I'll give a closer look at uh, how things are set up underneath so this provides a little better view of how things are set up underneath. Of course, this is the lab jack here. And of course, again, you don't want to be pressing directly on the skin because there would be a risk of, uh, you know, causing the, spin, the skin to buckle or is causing the, uh, the setup to not be as rigid. So essentially what I've got are a set of one by twos that act as a load spreader that uh, spreads the load across two of the ribs. And actually, I also use this in my uh, wing flipping operation as well to help provide support so I'm not putting direct pressure on the skins. And looking further in the back you can also see a similar thing back here with the uh, using the the one by twos as load spreaders. And then in particular it's hard to tell if you can really see it but when I am doing a wing flip operation uh, since these would have a, since these one by twos would have a tendency to try and move around I've actually got these attached with some uh, velcro attachments so that way when the uh, when the wing gets moved into a vertical position and there's not anything really pressing on them it, it keeps the keeps the one by twos from from shifting so the next thing I'll cover is the stabilization system for the ribs one of the concerns that I always have when I'm doing things like ribs uh, whether it was in here or doing the stabilizers or even the rudder is that since you've got such a, re such a relatively uh, long piece of metal here there there is a tendency where this could shift on you on you when you're trying to drill it so I wanted to make sure that I did not uh, that that did not happen while I was doing the drilling now when I was doing the drilling out the bottom or drilling out the top skin of course I had I still had access to the to the bottom here so I could uh, set up a stabilization system where I would be able to uh, everything would just be resting on the table of course it's a little bit more difficult when you've got the skin in the way so I had to go through a little bit a little bit more uh, elaborate setup and part of that consists of using a again using 8020 again and then making use of these right angle pieces now I had to use something similar in the other one 
I did make one change though uh, when I had done this before I had been using the i had been making use of these uh, side grip Clicos like this the only problem is is that you've got this flange in the way right here and this and the uh, side grip side grip Clico would just barely clear the uh, barely clear that and in fact actually I mean I had to put a spacer block in there and I decided I really didn't want to continue using that so what I wound up doing instead is the same same right angle pieces but I went ahead and just uh, glued on a uh, using some hot melt glue just glued on uh, a little bit of a one by two spacer and then I've got spacers on or I've got these uh, supports on both sides so all I have to do is you know once I get my get my alignment set where this is uh, as straight as I want to want it to be then I'll go ahead and, and add the clamps on both sides and then that's done a very that did a very good job as far as uh, you know keeping this rigid and, and not moving around uh, every one of my every one of my drill holes uh, you know lined up exactly where I expected them to be if there was any deviation it was just because when I was drilling out the wing skin sometimes the drill would shift a little bit on me if I was drilling so I did have a little bit of deviation off my center lines but everything uh, held up uh, everything again landed up exactly where I expected it to. Now, I used a similar system that I used for the uh, when I was doing the top wing skin in that I've got uh, a piece of a uh, 2020 80 20 and then have that anchored to the table both top and bottom and then of course I've got a piece of one inch I guess 80 20 material uh, on here uh, attached on here and then as far as uh, since we're talking a 12 foot length and especially before I have the clamps on there there's going to be a tendency for this to sag so going all the way to the middle you can again see another lab jack that's being used here for supporting the, this piece of 8020 in the middle and this also you can al also gives you an opportunity to see the the clamp that was used on the other side and then just taking a quick look over on the other side here as far as the end supports go and I've got a sim got a similar setup right here uh, where I've got a piece of a 2 inch 8020 that's anchoring a, a piece of 1 inch 8020. One thing I wanted to do similar to what I did when I was drilling the uh, top skin in is that I wanted to, wanted a way to be able to uh, be able to verify that you know as I'm drilling my holes that I'm not running into any problems with the uh, with uh, possibly the the rib shifting or something like that so of course that necessitates the use of a camera again we run into a problem with uh, in this case where uh, of course we've got the top skin that's already attached so there's really no way obviously to do a camera from underneath uh, you know just resting off off the table similar to what I had when I was doing the top skin so I had to do something a little bit more creative uh, still using actually a similar type of setup using the selfie sticks with one of the one of the small uh, just uh, mini inspection cameras with a right angle with just a right right angle uh, uh, mirror attached on there so that I can uh, so that I'm able to look up uh, of course we're still talking a considerable length here so I couldn't uh, I didn't quite have enough space in my shop to be able to uh, do everything off of uh, off just a single pole so that's why you see two uh, see two selfie sticks here as well as uh, two of the web cameras and then for the long side here just aiming a little further down of course you've got the basic selfie stick and then I uh, cut a couple of slots in some PVC that I had and was able to uh, rig basically rig up an extension all the way to the uh, that extends all the way out to the end and of course the the way I would use this of course is, is as I was doing the drilling I would just uh, you know run the run either you know this or the or the other uh, selfie stick uh, through the lightning holes and and be able to adjust the camera to be able to see what was going on now we'll uh, say of course I mean doing it this way of course it gave, it gave me peace of mind uh, that uh, that you know when I was drilling my holes that nothing that I wasn't going to have any surprises when I got when I pulled the skin off uh, of course on the other time on the other hand it did you know it does add considerable time because obviously for for uh, every hole that you drill, you know you've got to reposition that camera, get it in roughly pointed in roughly the direction where you expect the uh, expect the hole to appear, and then go ahead and do your operations. So uh, it does add time, but at the same time, I figure that the extra time was worth it. And as far as you know, I would if I didn't do it and went and did all this hole drilling, and then there was some kind of problem, you know, then I would wind up with a big surprise. Uh, 
or not so nice surprise uh, when it came after I pulled the skin off. We have switched back to the trailing side of the wing. Of course, one of the uh, problems you run into, of course, if you've got skins on both sides of course, and you want to use a camera, of course, it's a little hard to be able to see what's going on. Now, the cameras that I do have do have built-in LEDs. Uh, the problem is, is that I actually get a lot of glare from those so that they're you know, just almost unusable. So for this situation, what I wound up doing is essentially using a, an LED strip light, uh, which is what you see lit up right here. And of course, that's just run all the way from one end to the other. And that provided uh, some very nice glare-free glare illumination. Uh, now, it does only have lighting on one side. So, I mean, this one's actually twisted around. But uh, that did provide very nice uh, glare-free glare illumination throughout the entire length of the wing itself so that I could uh, you know, capture good shots of the, uh, of the drilling as it was happening. One thing I will add, I didn't actually uh, include, capture any video shots of the drilling to, to show on this video because it was pretty much just the, the same thing that I had done when I had uh, done my documentation for drilling the top wing skin. So this is all I'll cover as far as the drilling of the bottom skin to the, uh, to the wing itself. Uh, my main purpose here is just mainly for my own purposes to document how I had this set up so when I get ready to do the other wing, then I can go, then, uh, you know, I'll have a good reference so that I can get everything set up the same way again. I am quite happy with how this, how the, how this did ultimately work out. So, like I said, at the very minimum, it's just here as a reference for me, but if someone else is building an airplane and maybe trying to think of ways to be able to handle building the wing, then this might give them some ideas uh, on how to proceed. So if you've got any questions, uh, let me know in the comments.